document is, please? Uh, it's the document that the minister released last week, Clean Water, and it's no, got page no. 34 of the appendix. No, it's available to all members if they need to take reference to it. Question number seven, Carmel Cipollone. To the Minister of Social Development, does she agree with the Prime Minister who said, quote, I must emphasise that increasing access to data will not be at the expense of security or risks to privacy, end quote, in regards to the government's collection of private client data from contracted social services. The Honourable Antony. Mr Speaker, yes, absolutely. Just like doctors and counsellors who collect similar data, MSD has robust procedures for gathering and protecting personal information and has done so safely for decades from a variety of sources. And of course, we are working closely with the Privacy Commissioner to ensure clients' privacy rights are protected. The government is not interested in personal files or case notes, and MSD will not be looking at individual records. As I've said before, it's about having the data so that we can better understand what services are needed, what is effective, and where the gaps are. I think both taxpayers and the people who access these services expect that the $330 million the government funds in community-based social services every year to be spent on the programmes to get the very best results for vulnerable children, young people and adults. Supplementary question. Supplementary question, Carmel Cipollini. Does she consider the rights and privacy of citizens seeking assistance from community law centres to be more important than the rights and privacy of citizens seeking support from mental health and addiction services, rape crisis or women's refuge, given that community law centres have recently been made exempt from private client data sharing requirements, or are they just lucky to have legislation to protect them? The Honourable Antoi. Well, Mr Speaker, community law centres are not funded by MSD through community investment. And the whole purpose of collecting the data by MSD through the community investment is so that we can ensure that the right services are available to all New Zealand's vulnerable children, young people and adults. Supplementary question. Supplementary question, Carmel Cipollone. Is she aware that rape crisis spokesperson Andrea Black has been told by clients that, quote, they would not seek help with us if they knew this was going to happen, end quote, in response to the government's collection of private client data? And if so, is she concerned that under her watch, survivors of sexual assault will be putting off accessing support services they desperately need? Two supplementary questions. The Honourable and and Mr Speaker, will providers will ultimately make decisions about who they will provide that service to and for. And I would encourage any provider with concerns or questions that they felt haven't been answered by MSD to talk to MSD urgently so that their concerns can be allayed. They would then be able to reassure their clients about how this data is being used, but more importantly, about how it is being protected ensuring that they continue receiving funding for those services. Supplementary question, Carmel Cipollone. How does she expect the public and service providers to have confidence in her approach to private sensitive client data sharing when the Privacy Commissioner is conducting an inquiry after she has already recklessly inserted the requirements into contracts? The Honourable Antonio. Uh, Mr Speaker, yes, I do understand that the Office of the Privacy Commissioner is responding to requests uh, to have a look at the collection of individual client-level data by contracted providers. But the Ministry has been working with the Privacy Commissioner throughout the process to ensure clients' privacy rights are protected. And we have invited the Office of the Privacy Commissioner to be part of a collaborative approach to working through what needs to be in place to ensure that the, the client-level data that we are collecting does protect the interests and rights of individuals. To question. Supplementary question, Carmel Cipollone. If the Privacy Commissioner highlights serious concerns about the government's private client data collection through the inquiry, will she significantly adjust the approach or abandon it altogether? The Honourable Antony. Well, Mr Speaker, of course, if working collaboratively with the Privacy Commissioner, 
we will listen to any recommendations that he has to make. However, this government makes good use of data in order to make sure that the $330 million we spend every year out in the com providing community services goes to the people who need it. We make sure that we um, want to make sure that we fill any gaps in services, and so we will continue to work with the sector to make sure they understand there is no intention to look further than that client-level data and protect the privacy of those clients. A supplementary question, Chan Logie. Um, to the Minister, when organisations working with male survivors of sexual abuse report many clients don't even want to give their full names due to social stigma, how does the Minister think those men are going to access a service that requires them to give the government their full names, addresses and children's details? The Honourable Anthony. Mr Speaker, as I said before, that providers ultimately make decisions about who they will provide a service to and for. And I would hope that providers would be able to reassure their clients that there will be sufficient protection of client privacy in order for them to access the services that they want. Supplementary, Mr Supplementary Speaker. Supplementary question, Jan Logie. Why were community organisations not consulted or even made aware of the new requirement to collect individual data until it appeared in their contracts? The Honourable Oh, Anthony. Mr Speaker, I absolutely reject that. This has been talked about. In fact, I have stood in front of audiences of uh, NGOs and talked about this now for two years. Yeah. Supplementary, Mr Supplementary Speaker. Supplementary question. Jan Logie. Will the Minister review this ill-thought-through policy in light of significant organisations saying clearly that they will not hand over clients' private data in return for funding? The Honourable Anne Tolley. Mr Speaker, this government is determined to make sure that the $330 million government spends every year on providing services to the community, go to the people that need those services, and, uh, and, and to make sure that there are no gaps and people left without services. Order. Um, supplementary question, Derek Bohr. Thank you, sir. Supplementary to the Minister. How long has the Minister known about the breaches of contract, including potential fraud and corruption, during the contract between MSD and the Pacific Media Network, delivering the Pacific Proud campaign, which has seen the taxpayer ripped off to the tune of $1.5 million. What? What? The Honourable Anne Tolley. Um, well, Mr Speaker, that is very wide of it the is, um, yeah. question, and I, I have no um, um, data, I have no advice to actually provide an answer to that question. Okay. Question number eight.